So this is our second area review video and we're going to take the basic ideas about area and apply them to some more difficult uh, sorts of problems. Um, so if you're feeling unclear about area in general, it might be a good idea to go back and watch area review one as well um, and then watch this one. So just as a very quick review, um, to solve for the area of a rectangle, we multiply the length of the sides. So for here, the area would equal 3 times 6 square units. And 3 times 6 is 18, so the area of this rectangle would be 18 square units. Uh, just as a quick note, you know, this is a good example of why really memorizing the multiplication facts is very helpful. Um, already in third grade we're seeing places like this where you're at a big advantage if you can solve 3 times 6 right away. Um, and that's going to just become more and more true in fourth and fifth grade. And so it's really a good idea to work very hard on memorizing those now so that in fourth and fifth you're really ready to go. Here's a 4 times, a 4 by 7 rectangle. So we've we would solve this with 7 times 4, or 4 times 7, which equals 28. Um, and that would be the area of this rectangle. Now, what if, instead of having just one of those, what if I had two? So, let's imagine that we have a second one. Hey, just like that. And <clears throat> what if I was to push these two rectangles together? Now, <clears throat> imagine that this is a better looking rectangle than the one I drew. Here, I'll draw on what it should really look like. This is now a bigger rectangle made up of the two parts. The side length is now 4 plus 4, which equals 8. Um, and let's think about some of the things that this means. So first of all, we already solved for the area of one of them being 28. So the area of two of them should equal 28 plus 28. So let's just do a little side math. Uh, 8 plus 8 is 16. Carry the 1. I can either do that to the top or the bottom. Uh, 1 plus 2 plus 2 is 5, so it should be 56. Now let's see if that holds up. So our new side lengths are 7 and 8. So this is 7 times 8. Well, what is 7 times 8? Well, 7 times 8 equals 56. And that's not a coincidence. Um, you'll notice that whether I solve it with the new side lengths or the old side lengths, I get the same answer. And in math, what's really nice about math, even though it has many challenges, is that things always fit together like this. And in fact, if you do something and you find that it doesn't fit together, um, then you know you've made a mistake. So let's say, for example, that I had made a mistake in my addition. And let's say that I had forgotten to carry the 1, take that 10 and add it to the tens place. And I didn't bundle line. I just said 8 plus 8 is 16, there's a 6, and 2 plus 2 is 4. 46 is incorrect. And you'll notice it does not match 56, 7 times 8. That tells me that somewhere there's a mistake. So it's really important to always make sure that your work matches up. Uh, if it doesn't, then you have a mistake somewhere. We can use this idea of adding rectangles together to help us solve complicated problems. So let's take a look at another one. I'll draw a nice long rectangle there. And let's say that, for example, this is 3, and that's 16. Now, we have not practiced 16s. Um, we could use a, a lot of different strategies to figure it out, but we're going to take a look at a special strategy um, for area here. We can take this big rectangle and break it into two smaller ones. I'm going to do that about there. And on this side, I'm going to take 10 from that 16. And on this side, I'm going to take 6 from it. Now, what I'm looking at, uh, just to be clear, that I can do that because um, 
10 plus 6 equals 16. So the whole side length is 16, so I can break it into a 10 part and a 6 part. What's the advantage of this? The advantage is I now have two smaller rectangles which are much easier to do the multiplication for. This first one, the area is 3 times 10. This area over here, well, this side length would also be 3, so that's 3 times 6. Um, always remember that the opposite sides of a rectangle will be equal. So 3 and 3, 16 and 16, because 10 plus 6 is 16. Now, I'm in a good position. So I'm going to take that. Let's solve 3 times 10. Um, 3 times 10 is 3 tens, so it's 30. Three times six equals eighteen. Did that one earlier, too. and those are the two parts. Let me take these, and I'm going to put them back in. Okay, Oop, needs to be a little smaller. There we go. All right. So what do I do now to find the total area? I would just need to do is take these and add them together. So 30 plus 18. Uh, 0 and 8 is 8, and 3 tenths plus 1 ten is 4 tenths, so 48. And if I used other methods, I would also find that 3 times 16 equals 48. So the area here equals 48. And I did that by making the 16 into 10 and 6 and solving the area for the two smaller rectangles. Let's try that again with a slightly different problem. Sevens are really hard. Uh, they can be, at least. So let's do a 7 times 9 rectangle. Now, most of you have really mastered your 9s. So um, you might find that this one isn't too bad for you. But let's just take another look at a thing, some tricks we can play here. What if I break the 9 into 4 and 5? Well, now I have two smaller problems. I have 5 times 7, which equals 35. And I have 4 times 7, which is 28. Oops, I should probably actually write it. 4 times 7 equals 28. Kind of out of room. OK. But I have 5 times 7 equals 35 and 4 times 7 equals 28. And I can again add them together to find the total. Uh, 5 plus 8 is 13. So that's 3 ones, 1 10. Um, 1 10 plus 3 tens is 4 tens, plus another 2 tens is 6 tens, so 63. And you can check that quick with the finger trick. 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, Five. Those are sort of some hands. And I go across finger one, two, three, four, five, six, put finger six down, and then count with me 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Whoops, I got totally confused. Um, I forgot what problem I was doing. That's always a danger. Always be thinking about am I solving the right problem? So I'm doing nine times seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I put finger 7 down, and 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 61, 62, 63, it matches. Um, always a good idea to check another way to see if your work matches up. We're going to look at two final kinds of problems. And these are problems where we have more than one rectangle. Um, and in some of them we're even missing information. These are some of the trickiest math ideas that we have to conquer in third grade. Um, so I'm going to go through it and follow along and uh, try your best with these, but if you find that these are challenging, that's good because that means you're really thinking about it. These are challenging problems. Alright, before we even add any numbers in, let's take a look at this shape. 
What do you notice about it? What I notice is that I could turn this into two different rectangles, and there's more than one way I could do it, but if I put a line here, I now have this rectangle, and I have this rectangle. So if someone asked me the area of this shape, I could find the area of those two little rectangles, add them together, just like we've been doing with rectangles that are next to each other like that, and find the total area. So let's put in some numbers now. Let's say that this is 2, and this is 3, and how about this is 4, and this is 2. These are nice small numbers, should make it relatively friendly to solve this problem. So, how do we solve for the area of the blue rectangle? Well, the area of that one is going to be 2 times 3, which equals 6. How do we solve for the area of the red rectangle? That's going to be 4 times 2, which equals 8. How do I find the area for the whole figure put together? Well, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to take the area of the blue rectangle and add it to the area of the rec red rectangle to find the total. So the area of the blue rectangle was 6, and I'm going to add it. Anytime I'm adding things together, I'm using plus, um, that's addition, and I'm going to add that other area, and 6 plus 8 equals 14. Now there is another way to solve this problem. Um, let's think about what that is. And this other way is a little bit more confusing for this rectangle, but it might be helpful in other ones. Let's imagine for a minute that I have... Actually, let me... Oops erase out some of this here. Okay. So instead of breaking it into the two rectangles, the other thing I could do is I could imagine a big rectangle like this. And now I have a big rectangle with a piece missing. I'm going to shade in the missing piece. Okay, do you see that? That piece is missing from the big green rectangle that I just drew. So what I could do is I could find out how big the big rectangle would have been and take away or subtract the missing piece. This is going to require a little bit of problem solving. So how tall would the big rectangle have been? Well, if that, that side is going to be 2 plus 3 to be the total height. So that side is going to be 5 tall. And we know it's 5 wide. So the green rectangle would have been 5 times 4 equals 20. 20 square units in area. How big would the missing piece have been? Well, this side is 4 wide. This part of it is 2 wide, so this would also have been 2, because four, 2 plus 2 is 4. So this missing area, I'm going to shade that just in blue quick, that area would have been 3 times 2 equals 6, 6 square units in area. Now what? Well, remember that this is a missing piece. I'm not adding them together anymore. So I'm going to subtract. And it's going to be 20 minus 6 equals 14. This method is trickier for this one. For a problem like this, you probably want to just make the two little rectangles and add them together. Um, but there is another kind of problem where we will have to do the subtraction. And let's take a look at that kind of problem. So, in this kind of problem, we have a large rectangle, 
Oops, I can draw it better than that. And inside the large rectangle, there's a missing part. Um, and I shaded the part that isn't missing in, so that white part in the middle is a hole. Now, let's think about this for a minute without any numbers. How would we find out how big the shaded part is? Well, I'd need to find out how big the rectangle would be if there wasn't a hole, and then subtract the amount that is missing. Now, if I know all the side lengths, this is pretty easy. Um, you know, if that's 2, and this is 5, and it's 9 wide by, let's say, 6 high, well, then 9 times 6 equals 54, and 2 times 5 equals 10. So to find the missing area, it's 54 minus 10 equals 44. 44 square units for the shaded area. Um, that one's pretty easy, but unfortunately, sometimes we're going to see problems where it isn't spelled out quite that way, um, where we have to do some problem solving uh, to figure out the side lengths. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at, I think, two more problems. And one of them is going to be one that looks more like this, and one that is going to look like this, and they're going to have missing information from them. And we're going to have to solve them like a puzzle. Um, now that we understand adding together the two rectangles, like we did the first time, um, and this subtraction style. Okay, here's our first problem. What do we notice? Well, we have almost a rectangle, but it's got that sticky out part. And I have two sides that aren't labeled yet. I'm going to mark them for us. This one, and this one. And we'll probably need to figure those out to solve this problem. So before we start solving for the areas, let's see if we can figure out those missing side lengths. Let's focus on that blue one first. To figure out the blue one, what is going to help us? Well, this, I'm going to extend the blue line a little bit, is going to be the same, if we imagine that as a rectangle, as this side. Those are going to be the same height in a rectangle. So let's undo that. What does that tell us? That tells us that this height plus the this height, this taller one, the higher up one, they're going to equal three. So now we've got some pretty simple math. Two plus something equals three. That's one. Now we can use the same trick over here. Let me just get rid of those arrows quick. Okay, so we said that one was 1. The red one is going to be the same as whatever this is. Um, uh, plus whatever that is is going to equal 7. So 5 plus something equals 7 because, again, this is going to be the same on both sides. The, 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 rectangle, the facing sides of the rectangle, the opposite sides of the rectangle, are going to equal each other. So, um, my pointer, uh, 5 plus whatever this is, is going to equal that whole length. And if we understand that, we see that the numbers are pretty friendly. 5 plus something equals 7? Well, the se something has got to be 2. Well, now I have all the information I need. But now I need to actually go and break this into two rectangles and solve for the area. Um, there's more than one way I could do this. I'm going to break it here. Now I have a big, long rectangle and a little one. Um, so that top one, the side lengths are one, and 2. So it's 1 times 2, which equals 2. 
this one, the side lengths are two. Now, here's it'd be very tempting to come over here and say, ah, the side length's three. No, it's not. The side length, that three goes from here all the way up to here. We're looking at just this rectangle, okay? We've got to narrow our, our focus in on that. So the side lengths are, in fact, two and seven. So two times seven, which equals 14. Now, this is easy. 14 plus 2 for the total area. The area equals 14 plus 2, because I'm adding those two rectangles together, and it equals 16. All right, I made the numbers pretty friendly on this one, so we can try to understand the idea. Here's our final problem type. This is the one where I'm taking away the middle hole. But instead of telling you how big the hole is, telling the side lengths of it, I've given you clues. I've tell, I'm telling you how far away from each side that hole is. And that's what these arrows mean. It's saying how far away from the side those are. So the big, the big rectangle, that's pretty easy. We've got 5 times 8. Let's just write that down. And 5 times 8 equals 40. Now, the hole, this is where it gets a little tricky for us to think about. The, over here, the hole is 2 away. And over here, it's 1 away. So, this side length, I should label that in a different color. This side length, I'm labeling in blue is not 8. 8 is the whole thing here. It's 2 away and then 1 away. 2 away over here, 1 away over here from 8. So I have to use subtraction to find that. I'm going to take the whole 8 and I subtract 2 and I subtract 1. 8 minus 2 is 6 minus another 1 is 5. So this side length is 5. We're going to do the same thing with the other side length. So I'm going to label that one in a different color. Again, the whole thing is 5. But what the arrows are telling me is that it's one away from the top and one away from the bottom. So 5 minus 1 minus 1 which equals 3. So the hole, the area of the hole is 3 times 5 which equals 15. Now, I didn't do a great job drawing this or picking the numbers for it to make it look realistic but that's something you have to watch out for. Sometimes the problems won't be drawn in a realistic way you have to use, rely on the numbers. The numbers are going to tell you the, the road to solve this. So, now what do I do? Now I have the area. Now, now all I have to do is take the um, total area, which is 40, and subtract the area of the hole, which is 15. Um, 40 minus 15. Um, let's practice this with a little bit of side math. 40 minus 15, it is a zero. I should probably fix that. If your numbers aren't clearly written, it, it's going to make your life more difficult. So I'm going to just erase that and do it over again. Okay, I've got to borrow here, because uh, zero minus five is going to give me a crazy answer here. So what I need to do is I need to borrow a 10. So I take one of those 10s, and this becomes just 10, because I have no ones there. I've tra traded that 10 for 10 ones. So 10 minus 5 is 5, 3 minus 1 is 2, so 25 is the area of this. Those pieces of the math weren't what was challenging here. It was all the thinking that went in ahead of time. And, you know, area is, is an interesting topic, but we, we, we have to sometimes stop and think about what we're doing. Um, what's happened a lot in class is we get to a complicated problem like this, and people just start grabbing the numbers and multiplying them, adding them, subtracting them. We have to kind of really stop and imagine what we're doing and think it all the way through. Um, so 
here, let's go back to basics for a second. When we find the area of a rectangle, we multiply the side lengths. And that will give us the area in square units. When we have more than one rectangle, when we're adding them together, then we do the same thing for each one. To find the total, we simply add them together. Sometimes, though, it's going to be easier to subtract from an imaginary bigger rectangle. And sometimes, the people who write the problem aren't going to tell us everything we need to know right away, and we have to do some problem solving. But always think back to, to find the area, multiply the side lengths. If you have more than one, you need to add them together afterwards. Well, I hope this was helpful, and as always, feel free to ask any questions.